The overall goal of the following experiment is to determine cytotoxic T-cell activity by comparing an impedance-based approach using the Exceligence system to the chromium release assay. The first step is achieved by separating peripheral blood mononuclear cells from whole blood using FICOL. Next, the PBMC are added to wells along with peptide antigen, human recombinant IL-2, and irradiated PBMC to create antigen-specific CD8 T-cells. The antigen-specific CD8 T-cells are then co-cultured with tumor cells in both assays in order to cause tumor cell death. Results are obtained that show percent lysis of tumor cells using both the impedance method and the chromium release assay. The main advantage of this technique over existing methods like the chromium release assay is that the impedance-based system collects real-time data and requires less cells that don't need any labeling. For this protocol, blood from normal, healthy HLA-A2 positive donors provides a source of PBMCs or peripheral blood mononuclear cells. Following the manufacturer's protocol, use FICOL PAIC Plus to separate the PBMCs from the blood. Next, into six well plates, load approximately 4 million PBMCs in 2 milliliters of media per well. To each well, add HLA-A2 binding peptide for a final concentration of 10 micrograms per milliliter. Culture the cells. On alternate days, to help stimulate and expand T cells, add fresh media supplemented with human recombinant IL-2 for a final concentration of 50 units per milliliter. After one week, prepare a culture of autologous PBMCs. Irradiate the cells and pulse them for two hours with the same HLA-A2 binding peptide at 10 micrograms per milliliter. Re-stimulate the culture by adding one milliliter of the irradiated autologous PBMCs to each well. Continue adding fresh media supplemented with IL-2 on alternate days. After another week, re-stimulate the cultures in the same manner a second time. After six more days in culture, the cells will be ready for use. Prepare the Exceligence Impedance Measuring Station for use by equilibrating it to 37 degrees Celsius under 5% carbon dioxide for at least an hour. Harvest 75% confluent human tumor cells using 0.25% trypsin and centrifugation. Count the tumor cells using a hemocytometer and reconstitute them in RPMI tumor media at a concentration of 7,500 cells per microliter. Next, program the Exceligence software. Set up the layout page with the well layout. Set up the schedule page to take impedance readings every five minutes for a 40-hour period. For the first 18 hours, the Exceligence system will only take impedance readings of the tumor cells. Then, add 100 microliters of RPMI tumor media per well. Take a background reading on the Exceligence E-plates by measuring impedance in the absence of cells. After the tumor cells are added, load the plates in the Exceligence station and start taking readings. The tumor cells will immediately start adhering to the E-plates. After about 18 hours of incubation, the tumor cells will have attached to the E-plates and doubled to 15,000 tumor cells per well. At this time, harvest prepared T-cells by gentle scraping and agitation. Centrifuge the T-cells. Reconstitute them in RPMI media with 10% FBS and count them using a hemocytometer. Once the cell density is known, Prepare a two-fold dilution series of T-cells, such that when 200 microliters of T-cells are added to the tumor cells, the highest concentration is 40 T-cells per tumor cell. 
The last dilution of the series should provide 1.25 T cells per tumor cell. Pause the Accelligence station and remove the E-plate. Using a pipette, remove the media in the wells. Then, load 200 microliters of T-cells using all the concentrations from the dilution series. As a negative control, use pure media. Return the E-plate to the Accelligence station and continue the program. At the end of the assay, normalize the results. Always follow institutional radiation safety procedures when working with chromium-51 and chromium-51 labeled target cells and use the appropriate shielding to reduce radiation exposure. Begin by pulsing tumor cells for two hours at 1 million cells per milliliter with 10 microliters per milliliter of fresh chromium-51. Next, wash the tumor cells in 10 milliliters of RPMI media with 10% FBS. Centrifuge the cells and reconstitute them in the same media at 1 million cells per milliliter. Then, to a 96 well round bottom plate, add 100,000 tumor cells per well. To calculate spontaneous release, do not add anything else to six of these wells. To six other wells, add 100 microliters Triton X100 to lyse the cells and hence calculate maximum release. To all the remaining wells, add T cells to the plate using the dilution series prepared previously. Now incubate the plates for five hours and collect 50 microliter samples of supernatant from each well. Load the samples onto a Luma plate. After drying the plates in the hood overnight at room temperature, measure their CPM using a gamma counter. T-cells and SKBR3 cancer cells were cultured on Accelligence plates and the cell index was measured, which is a reflection of the plate impedance. Because T-cells do not require adherence to proliferate, their effect on impedance was negligible over a 40-hour culture. Cancer cells cultured alone showed an increasing impedance measurement. However, an addition of T-cells at 18 hours disrupts this trend. This event requires software normalization after the addition of T-cells and is further investigated in the next experiment. When SKBR3 cells were co-cultured with varying concentrations of T-cells, reductions in impedance were very clearly dependent on the dose of T-cells. Data was collected every five minutes over three trials. At the 10-hour mark, cell indices followed a second-order polynomial over the range of T-cells, indicating that the Accelligence station monitors CD8 T-cell-mediated death of SKBR3 tumors in real time as a drop in cell index. To determine if reductions in impedance of SKBR3 by the T-cells were antigen-specific, SKBR3 cells were co-cultured with HLA-A2 positive FLU-specific T-cells that do not recognize HER2 nu. These cells had significantly less lytic activity. To further determine if HER2 new specific T cells were killing in an antigen specific fashion, antibody to fast ligand was incorporated into the co cultures. The antibody did not reduce the lytic activity of the HER2 new P369 specific T cells. However, with T cells that were non specifically activated with anti CD3 CD28 beads, the antibody did inhibit lysis. To determine if the killing was occurring in an HLA class 1 dependent manner, either anti-HLA class 1 antibody or isotype control antibody were added to the co-cultures. The results strongly supported this hypothesis. T cells were next co-cultured with other cancer cells at a 1 to 5 ratio. The HLA A2 negative tumor cell line BT20 was used as a negative control. 
the results show that the method is useful for multiple target adherent tumor cells. Co-cultures of the HER2 new P369 specific T cells were added to chromium 51 labeled target cells, followed by CRA analysis. The exceligence assay appears more sensitive. To analyze consistency, intra-assay variation was calculated as the percent coefficient of variation. At each cell ratio between 1 to 40 and 1 to 5, this measured below 15%. At the lowest cell ratios, however, the percent CV was high or unpredictable. Additionally, the variability of SKBR3 T-cell lysis by co-culture with different P369 specific T-cell lines was examined. Data was generated 30 days apart, the assays were performed in triplicate, and the results were very similar. After watching this video, you should have a good understanding of how to determine cytotoxic T-cell activity using antigen-specific CD8 T-cells in tumor cells utilizing an impedance-based approach.